Now the next concept that we have to discuss is the site selection for thermal power station. Let us say you are an entrepreneur, you want to start a thermal power station and what are the factors that you have to take into consideration before selecting a site for your thermal power station. First thing is, if your plant is a large plant, large plant means like a commercial plant, you want to generate a bulk amount of energy means bulk fuel requirement will also be there. That means bulk coal requirement will be there in India. So such a plant must be located near to a coal mine. Understood? Large plant must be located near to a coal mine. This coal mine is also called as pit head. What is that? P-I-T-H-E-A-D, pit head. And uh, such large plants which are located close to the coal mines are also called as pit head stations. Understood? Please note these points, very important. Next, if it is a so small plant, it may be located near to the load center. Okay? Why? Because the fuel requirement is less. You can transport some bulk amount of fuel, let us say required for a one month power generation, you will once only you will transfer and store it and you will use when and whenever you want. For example, if you continuously require huge amount of coal, coal transportation charges will increase. So, so that will become a major uh, economical blow to you. So to avoid that thing, you have to place it near to the coal mine. So if you look at uh, in our country also, most of the thermal power station, bulk power stations will be located near to the coal mines only. Understood? Next is ample quantity of water availability must be there. Yes, this is anyhow. And that is possible if your plant is near to some river or something like that. Then only you will get continuous water availability will be there. Large area of land. Sir, just now you told that thermal power station will require less land. Yes, it will require less land as compared to hydroelectric power station. But in fact, if you look at a general thermal power station only, it requires large area of land. And I said that it is required less land as compared to hydroelectric power station means what is the area of land required for hydroelectric power station. So I have kept one large, you should keep three larges, large, large, large area of land required for hydroelectric power station. Understood? I hope you got the point. Next is cheap land because power sector is basically business that award. That's what I have been telling you. You have to make sure that you have to get maximum benefit or maximum power output with minimum investment. That is what basically any business means. Okay. Cheap land. Next is transportation facilities. Okay. If staff has to come, there should be proper road facilities. And uh, more than road, what is important is in transportation, railway line must be there. That is very, very important. If without railway line, you may not uh, construct or you may not choose that particular location for setting up your thermal power station. Please keep that in mind. Why? Because main uh, factor for uh, thermal power station operation is availability of fuel. Of course, water is also there, but without fuel, how will you start it? Even though you are having water, water will be just stand still cool like that, isn't it? You have to heat the water. So you require coal. So now to transfer coal from the, uh, from the pit head or the mine to your plant, you have to transport by some ways of transportation facilities. Okay. What are the available transport facilities? You are having airway, roadway and the next available way is the railway line only. Air and road are very costly and you cannot transfer continuously bulk amount. Only best way to transfer coal from the mine to the plant is railway. So railway line is the best, best way to transfer coal. This is a very, very important question for many competitive exams. They will ask you, okay? Railway line is the best uh, transportation technique to transport coal. It because it is cheap. What I mean to say is next is ash disposal facilities you should have enough ash disposal facilities why because ash is something a polluting component it is harmful to health and it is harmful to atmosphere you have to safely okay you have to dispose it okay or in some thermal portion what we do is ash will be used as a byproduct and it will be supplied to cement industries in cement industries also you may use ash okay so ash disposal is required as a matter of fact i should say a regular 2000 megawatt thermal power station will generate 5000 tons of ash in one day. Then you imagine what is the amount of ash uh, handling or ash disposal facilities you require. That is the importance of ash handling in a thermal power station. So if you satisfy all these criteria, then go for uh, selecting that site to set up your thermal power station and do your business. Okay. Next very, very important aspect is types of coal. This is very, very important aspect and uh, not many students will be good in this topic because you don't have proper material or guidance to explain you about this point. Okay. So types of coal means quality of coal. Let us say you go to market, you'll have different quality of 
some material isn't it so depending upon some percentages so we are also having different categories or different qualities of coal so these uh, uh, what I have written on the board are on the increasing order of the quality so if you look at lowest lowest quality is the peat is the least and anthracite is the highest quality another important aspect now you have to do is you should be very much clear or very much aware about these order this order why because sometimes what he will tell you he will give you two coals let us say he will tell you sub bituminous and bituminous in this both which is the high quality coal like that he will ask you bituminous is the high quality bituminous and semi bituminous semi bituminous is high quality than bituminous some students will think this is bituminous full bituminous this is semi bituminous means ah, it is half so it will be less quality no 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 here you will go sub bituminous is the less uh, less quality as compared to all bituminous coals again you see here lignite and black lignite, lignite. there are two types so sub bituminous is also called as black lignite so like this you have to be clear with all these names so that is the reason why i have written very clearly and you write it in the same way in your book also next how do you decide coal type that depends upon the amount of carbon is there in the coal because that is the carbon actually which is producing your fuel or your burning effect so depending upon the carbon content we will classify the coal in such ways first is the peat if it is peat your carbon content will be 5 to 20 percent okay you must be aware with these percentages it should run in your uh, mouths okay next is lignite lignite means you will have 20 to 40 percent of carbon next is sub bituminous or black lignite this will have content of 40 to 60 percent okay next is bituminous bituminous means 60 to 80 percent of uh, carbon content semi bituminous means 80 to 90 percent of carbon content that means you see carbon content is increasing means its quality is increasing and uh, the texture the color will also get becoming dark 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 okay anthracite you will have greater than 90 percent carbon content will be much higher than 90 percent okay that is about uh, peat lignite and this kind of coals and their carbon content so there are some important points that you have to keep in mind now the point is about indian coal indian coal so where will the indian coal be sir so basically indian coal is uh, a kind of a sub bituminous category actually it falls between sub bituminous and bituminous quality that is indian coal the coal that we get in india so in indian coal what is the percentage means coal percentage coal is 60 percent exactly so if 60 percent is coal what is the remaining thing sir remaining thing is what we not require it is simply the ash after coal is burned off what is left over is the ash only no so ash content will be how much 40 percent remaining is ash 40 percent so this is a very very important question that will be asked in competitive exams indian coal what is the ash content 40 percent what is the carbon content in indian coal carbon carbon is 60 percent okay like this he will ask you and when if he asks you what category does indian coal belongs to we can write it belongs to sub bituminous okay you can write it sub bituminous but practically it will be between sub bituminous and bituminous and throughout the world which coal is mostly used is bituminous qualities mostly used in thermal power stations in the world throughout the world okay and uh, semi bituminous is that coal which is best for power generation and you see as the carbon content or the quality increases automatically price also increases and their availability also decreases okay so anthracite is rarely available and uh, very costly okay so this is about types of coal and uh, all the pro pro points that may be necessary for you to remember for competitive exams is this much only and another important aspect is best method to transfer coal or transport to coal is through railway technique only okay that's it uh, for these two topics